Cleaners, 3475 Mount Elliott, the best in dry cleaning. Singleton's Cleaners, 4671 McDougal, the best in alteration. Singleton's Cleaners, 6947 Gratiot, the best people. Singleton's Cleaners, 9149 East Forest, the best locations. Singleton's Cleaners, 8141 Gratiot, the best service. Singleton's Cleaners, 2100 Crane at Kirchable, the best prices. Singleton's Cleaners, with six locations. Your, Your clothes, clothes are not clean until they're Singleton's clean. Yo, shout out DJ Cream. Stay a while and listen. Did you see all these, Sarah? Yes. <clears throat> all these toys. Yeah. They getting collected for nine years. I know. <laughs> oh, actually, I only saw the last three. I somehow I'm probably looking at the top shelf there.
have you been? Pretty good. Good. And I'm really uh, enjoying this. Slides out there on the trailer and the basketball. Good. We're good so far. Keep looking, please. Yeah. Okay. How you guys doing? Good. Okay. But I gotta tell you, I messaged you a couple of weeks ago and you responded quick. Greetings, nice stuff. Like. These are really nice sewing machines. I yeah. haven't even uncovered the art. Don't touch that. Wait, you said that right as I was touching this. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank the guys at work at Jostar, and it's like 6 o'clock in the morning. They're just like, you're off the channel. I don't have a chance. What street do you work out there, though? I work out. I'm on day shift. I'm on day shift. I'm on day shift. We have to go back to two shifts. What did you have to do to get one? I hate days. I did it one time doing school with me. Back in school, I did it one time. I work at the plant rock Ford plant. I don't know if you know what that is. And they had two shifts, and we went down to one shift. And they were like, you'll adjust after a couple of years. It's going to be fine. I'm not okay. I'm going to go You got a day shift for five years? My friend asked me one day. She said, like, come with me. Get back on the other. Yes, sir. I noticed she had that planet's peanuts. Yeah, I don't know. She's still around. Like oh, I didn't. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I thought you might be interested. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, <laughs> Here we go again. Give you more nothing. <laughs> Okay, guys, so wrap-up time. This was basically a compilation of garage sales we'd gone to over the last two to three weeks. And rather than put out a bunch of shorter videos, I decided to hold on to the footage until we had enough to compile it into one longer video. So I'm doing today's wrap-up solo. Sheila, the five-foot assassin, is off at her mom's house this weekend. Hopefully I'll see her tonight or tomorrow, so I'm going to stumble and bumble my way through this the best that I can. I've also got a little bit of a head cold coming on, so if I start sniffling or sneezing, that is why. At one of the garage sales we went to, Sheila picked up a couple of DVDs and Blu-rays that she found interesting. One of them being a DVD of A Bug's Life, the Pixar film from 1999. I've never seen this, and Sheila was so incensed that I had not seen A Bug's Life, that she didn't talk to me for three days. Um, I know this as the last role of Roddy McDowell, who played Cornelius in Planet of the Apes. Um, he unfortunately passed before the film came out, but this was the last thing that he ever did. So A Bug's Life, I've never seen it. I know it was wildly popular when it came out. Sheila's a big, big fan of it. But I didn't see a lot of the Pixar stuff that came out in the late 90s, early 2000s. So I'm looking forward to actually seeing it. Like I said, everything Pixar does is incredible. Sesame Street's Follow That Bird. It's a 1985 film. This is the 2002 DVD release. It was filmed in Canada. Uh, Northern Calloway, who plays David on Sesame Street, was actually denied entry to Canada due to a criminal conviction on his record. I don't know what David did, but he had a criminal conviction, which kept him from appearing in the film. I also saw that at one point in the film, there's a scene where Big Bird is working on a farm. And when they developed the film, there was a massive scratch through all of that footage that they got of Big Bird working on the farm. So they had to come back to the farm several months later. And it happened to be fall at the time. So they hand painted leaves on the trees green so that it would match all of the other footage that they had of Big Bird at the farm. Big fan of little things like that. It just adds to the movie.
I got a Ratatouille. Ratatouille Blu-ray, 2007 film. This is the 2016 release. The producers and animators of Ratatouille, uh, if you've never seen Ratatouille, definitely check it out. I saw it when it came out in 2007. But the animators and the producers of the film, they spent a bunch of time in Paris going to restaurants. Uh, They spent time with a, a French chef just so they could accurately animate all the food and the preparation of food, even down to checking out the garbage that was generated by a, 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 a French restaurant so that they could accurately portray all of that on film. They took like some motor scooter tours of Paris so they could accurately do uh, the Parisian cityscape. I love extra effort like that that goes into a film, and it definitely translates to the film because Ratatouille is just an amazing Pixar film. Sleeping Beauty came out in 1959, and this is the 2014 Blu-ray release. Uh, Disney actually started this. They greenlit Sleeping Beauty in 1950, and by like 1951, they had the storyboards done. It took them nine years to release the movie. It took them eight years just to make it from the uh, storyboards on through to the animation. They had several rewrites of the script. um, And Disney himself, um, a lot of times, wasn't available to come to the studio. And they depended a lot on Walt Disney to okay certain things like involving the story or the animation. And Disney just wasn't available. He happened to be off working on... Disneyland at the time, which I think came out in 1956, or they opened in 1956, rather. Okay, so I picked up a Captain Caveman figure from 2019. This is actually from the Scoob movie, uh, Scooby-Doo movie. Um, Captain Caveman was a big deal when I was a little kid. Came out in 1977, um, Hanna-Barbera character, created by Joe Ruby and Ken Spears. And it was actually intended, Captain. it was Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels, but the Teen Angels were intended to be a spoof of Charlie's Angels. I don't know why that never registered to me, but it, that makes complete sense. And Charlie's Angels was uh, wildly popular at the time. He doesn't have his club, so I'm going to find the club online, because what is Captain Caveman without his club? Who framed Roger Rabbit trading card set from Tops in 1987? This is a complete set. In fact, there's multiples um there's duplicates of of several of these including the stickers which are the most valuable in the set the jessica rabbit sticker alone is like 750 10 dollars something like that so it's really cool to find those i think i only paid a quarter 50 cents for them something like that so big fans of roger rabbit over here russ beery Be- sorry russ berry oily jigglers i'm not super familiar with these i had the king kong one which is why I picked it up. And they, they only had two of these at a garage sale, the King Kong and um, then the Vulture. I know these came out in the 60s. Uh, I just found when I was doing research on them that it's from a Russ Berry company, and these are highly collectible and highly sought after. The King Kong's in great shape. The Vulture has a bunch of paint loss, and the Vulture in like top-notch condition fetches as high as $350. Uh, The King Kong was one of the more popular ones. They made many versions of the King Kong, but really cool to find those. And again, I had the King Kong when I was a kid. I'll, I'll grab pretty much anything King Kong related. Detroit Lions mini football uh, from, this is the 2019 logo. I know that it's the newest logo, the one that they're currently using. It's a bit different from the logo from when I was a little kid and it's just a display item. We, Found it at a garage sale and was like a quarter. So being big Lions fans, we said, yeah, let's get that and we can just throw it up on a shelf. Mickey Mouse Ceramic Mug. This is known as the 3D Mug. Uh, Started making these in the 1990s, Disney did, and they still make them today. So I I think this one was probably from the 90s, and that made sense by the garage sale because most of the stuff the guy had in there was pretty much 90s and older and we that guy had a ton of stuff Uh, he basically bought storage units and he's trying to make room to bring other stuff out but he had a little bit of everything going on so it was cool to find that guy online 
fabulous Las Vegas souvenir dice from the 1950s. And we have a lot of Vegas stuff. We have a decent dice collection going on. We just keep finding dice. But we're married in Las Vegas. We go to Vegas all the time. And we have that Vegas shelf in a corner cabinet. And it's definitely got a home here. So it was cool to find that. Um, Sun Gems. These were sun catchers that came out in the 1970s. The, a hot air balloon sun catcher. And then a uh, Sun Gems rainbow. So we have a lot of sun catchers. Uh, Sheila's a, a big fan of sun catchers. And we have a window that catches a decent amount of light in our kitchen. And eventually it's going to be entirely covered in sun catchers because we've picked up a few over the years. This was interesting to find. Uh, a newspaper from the Sunday Mirror, May 12th, 1935. And it has an article on a policeman that was previously thought to have been killed by Pretty Boy Floyd. And recent evidence had come out that suggested otherwise. But this came out in 1935. Pretty Boy Floyd was uh, shot down by FBI agents in 1934. So it was roughly like seven months before that. Um, he had been shot in East Liverpool, Ohio, but, um, just fine. Really cool to find a newspaper that even references pretty boy Floyd. Um, public enemy number one, uh, you know, Hoover declared him public enemy number one. He was a bank robber, um, basically shot like 10 policemen or, or so over his career, uh, four during the Kansas city massacre. But, um, I was doing a little bit of research on the newspaper and uh, I found that during the depression, which is when his uh, reign of robberies was taking place, he actually, he was really popular with the public because while he was robbing the banks, he was also taking mortgages and burning them so that he was relieving the debt of farmers, homeowners, etc. So just really cool to find that. How often do you find 1935 newspapers? So Sheila picked up a rehaul. I hope I'm saying that right. Rehaul, uh, also known as a reader. It's hand carved from Shishan wood. Uh, it came out in a brown, but it was made in the uh, 1950s in India. It's used to hold religious text. So Sheila picked that up. She, she loves hand carved things and, um, she picked that up really cool. She also picked up a pitcher easel. Also hand-carved cherry wood. I'm not sure on the date. There's no label on it. There's no stamp on it at all. But really cool. Um, Pitcher easel. Planter's Peanuts tin bowl sets. Um, Sheila also picked these up at another grad sale. Um, two complete sets. Four smaller bowls with two larger bowls. These came out in the 1940s, um, made of tin. And they're just peanut bowls for uh, cocktail parties. Coca-Cola Christmas Craft. Uh, this, I was researching this online and I'm like, God, it looks like an official Coca-Cola thing. It's got the bears and all this stuff. And then after researching it for a while and looking it over, I was like, wait a minute, somebody made this. So it's made from beads and the bears on it are actually salt and pepper shakers that somebody strung through the, um, through the strand. So it's really cool to find it. And Sheila loves Coca-Cola bears and Christmas stuff in general. I'm assuming it was made in the 80s or 90s. Um, it was at that same big, bigger garage sale where the guy had a bunch of stuff like the newspaper from 1935 and stuff. He had pretty much everything in there was 90s and older. So cool to find that. Planter's Peanuts Salt Shaker. This is from the 1950s and this was actually part of a four piece set. This is the salt shaker from it. Uh, as you can see from the S on his hat. Uh, there was also a pepper shaker and, and a oil and vinegar container, but they're, they're worth a decent amount. Um, I also found when I was doing research on this, Mr. Peanut actually has a name. I did not know this. His name is Bartholomew Richard Fitzgerald Smythe. And he was created by a schoolboy uh, named Antonio Gentile. Um, and uh, he sent in a photo that he had drawn, or uh, not a photo, but a, 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 a drawing that he had made of a peanut guy. And they chose that as their mascot. And that was in uh, 1915, I believe. 
and he was awarded five dollars for coming up with it but Mm -hmm. um they ended up paying for him to go to medical school they paid for all of his education and the guy ended up becoming a doctor so pretty cool story i picked up some campaign buttons um well two campaign buttons and a third kind of a propaganda button but the the first one is a mcgovern shriver campaign pin from 1972 and what caught my attention about that was that i'm a big fan of hunter s thompson books and he did a book called fear and loathing on the campaign trail 1972 so the whole thing is about the uh, mcgovern campaign so it was really cool to to see the button there associated with it. We have a bunch of Thompson books, so maybe I'll put that on a shelf with uh, some of his books. But um, McGovern, he didn't win. He he lost on a lost badly to Richard Nixon in 1972. Um, Sergeant Shriver, that was the uh, his uh, running mate. He was a uh, part of the Kennedy family. And his daughter um, ended up marrying Arnold Schwarzenegger, actually. Um, The other one that I picked up was a Johnson Hubert Humphrey campaign pin from 1964. Uh, Johnson, of course, became president after the assassination of Kennedy in 1963. And uh, they won in 64 landslide over Barry Goldwater, but it was cool to find you don't see a ton of uh johnson related things there's a bunch of variations of campaign pins from 64 first time i've seen one and uh, it was only a quarter so picked that up the other one that we picked up was a button that says the hell with khrushchev that's in reference to nikita khrushchev the uh, premier of the soviet union he was a premier from 1958 to 1964 this button, I'm guessing, is 1961-1962, maybe. But uh, Khrushchev was premier of Russia, um, or the Soviet Union at the time, rather, um, through their the big boost in the Russian space flight, uh, space program. There's Sheila right there. Um, he was a big supporter of the, the space program, like I said. Sputnik won the human first human space flight in 1961. Um, he approved the, uh, authorized the construction of the Berlin Wall in 1961. And um, most notably to us in the United States, he um, vowed to defend Cuba during with uh, Soviet missiles, the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis with John Kennedy. So this is basically just a propaganda button that's saying Russia bad, and they depict Khrushchev as a gorilla, of course, on there. But you don't see a ton of this stuff, and it's actually quite valuable. There's none for sale on eBay, and the only place that I found it was an auction where it sold for a decent amount. So it's really cool to find things like that. I'm a big history fan, so I'll buy anything that is kind of strange cold war propaganda for sure now record albums we found a couple of 78s at a garage sale and they we don't collect 78s we have a few um like a muddy waters and um a few other ones blues albums uh we don't listen to 78s our turntable doesn't play 78s we do have a portable Uh, crosley portable that'll play 78s but just not something we listen to we did have a uh victor uh uh, victrola from the 20s at one point and it was missing a few parts and we were going to fix it up and then we just gave up on it and sold the thing but um the first one we found was bing crosby and the andrew sisters jingle bells from 1947 it's in pretty good shape. It, it, they had decent sleeves with them. The thing with 78s that I think I don't like the most is they're super brittle. They they break very, very easily. And just handling them, you can crack them and break them. And it's hard to find them where they're not chipped up real bad on the, on the sides. And they sound great and everything, but just not a big fan of having a bunch of 78s. But these two I thought were too cool to pass up, and I think we can just stick them in a frame or display them someplace. 
Um, so we have the Bing Crosby one and then the Ballad of Davy Crockett by Fess Parker from 1955. And Fess Parker played Davy Crockett in the TV series. Uh, I think it was Disney that, yeah, it was Disney that did Davy Crockett. But there, were, there was another version of this song by Tennessee Ernie Ford that was pretty popular at the time. But pretty cool to find those. And seven, there's a lot of 78s collectors. There's people that just collect 78s. We just don't happen to be people that do. Um, but had couldn't pass them up. Al Green, Higher Plane, LP from 1981. This is one of Al Green's gospel albums. And I saw on the back of it that he does a, co uh, a cover of People Get Ready by The Impressions. Love that song. Pretty much got it just so I could listen to his version of it. And lastly, uh, yesterday I'm sitting around at the house and I, I hear my door open and it means a package arrived on the porch. And I go out there and I can tell that it's a record because it's in a record packaging and we order records from time to time. So I called Sheila and the assassin had no idea what it was because usually she'll buy something and I give her a call and I say, hey, can I open it? And she's like, no, it's for your birthday or whatever. And we were both puzzled. So I opened it while she was on the phone and there was a letter attached to it. And in, I think it was the last video we did, we were at Flat Rock Speedway and we found a sleeve of the Leuven Brothers' Satan is Real and there was no album in it, and we were ranting and raving about how, oh, I can't believe that we, that wasn't in there and how much we enjoyed it. Well, some friends of ours bought the 180-gram version, uh, the new release of that album, and sent it to our house. Um, super touching. Thank you so much again, Missy, Bobby, Addie Bugs, Brad, Jamie, Zach, Dylan, the Lay family. Um, from here in Michigan, I've known Bobby and Brad forever. Um, Bobby's been one of my best friends through the majority of my life, and it was super touching that they sent that to me. So thank you once again, guys. You have no idea how much we appreciated that. So that is pretty much going to wrap it up. And um, don't forget, Satan is real. But we uh, had a great time going out to these garage sales, and garage sale season is pretty much officially kaput. It's got turned cold here. Winter has arrived. So it's time for antique malls and indoor flea markets and things of that nature. Maybe a few record stores. And we are thinking about trips for um, maybe January, February, March, maybe another trip to Las Vegas on the horizon and some smaller trips in between. But Keep the comments coming. I love to hear comments. I, I love that even a handful of people are watching these things. That's what's going to motivate us to keep doing these things. We're having a lot of fun doing them, and I love editing. So keep the comments coming. Like and subscribe. Thank you again to the Lay family. We love you guys. Everybody have a great week. Bye-bye.